Hey, Walter Sorrells back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, we'll make a Kydex sheath for a neck knife. So whether you make knives or whether you just want to make a sheath for an existing knife, this video is going to show you how simple it can be to make a Kydex sheath for a neck knife. So I did a previous video about how to make a neck knife and if you want to check that out right here uh, you can go back and watch how that's done. So we're going to be following my friend Michael Hughes. He does sheaths for me for my uh, Tactics Armory lineup of knives and uh, he's much better at this than I am. He's already lapped me long ago and uh, let's just jump in with Michael and see how he does it. Kydex is a thermoformable plastic, meaning you can heat it and mush it into a new shape, and when it cools, it'll hold the shape that you mushed it into. Kydex is purchased in sheet form. You can buy it in a multitude of colors in sizes up to 4 by 8 feet. There are a number of places where you can buy all the equipment and material that you'll need to make Kydex holsters and sheaths. Knifekits.com is one. But many of the knife making supply houses that you'll find online also sell all kinds of Kydex related materials and equipment. Now of course this type of knife is given the name neck knife because it's intended to be suspended around your neck. That being the case, the sheath is integral to the whole concept of the knife. It's suspended upside down so the knife really needs to be able to click in and out of the sheath and have a nice positive lock without any danger of falling out. In this case, the knife has a black micarta handle, so we'll go with good old tactical black. Michael begins by taping two sheets together, which have been trimmed, allowing space around the blade for the rivets, which will hold the sheath together. At this point, Michael typically likes to go straight to forming the kydex, but in this case, he'll be doing it the way I generally do it, which is to drill the holes for the quarter inch rivets, which will hold the sheath together. The advantage of doing the rivets ahead of time is that you can lay them out with a lot of precision. You might do this using a jig, a press, a drill, or a drill with a digital readout as he's doing here. The disadvantage of this approach is that you only have a very short window of time after the kydex has been heated to insert the knife, and it's not always easy to get the knife precisely centered in the space between the rivets. You can also occasionally get odd stretch marks if your temperature is a little off, though Michael and I have pretty well dialed it in so that that doesn't happen to us. After drilling the quarter inch holes, we'll set the rivets. Now since we're doing it in my home workshop, we're using an old homemade rivet setter that I made a long time ago, though Michael has a more sophisticated one in his shop. You can flare the rivets with a hammer as I'm doing here, or you can use an arbor press. The arbor press is preferable, but of course if you don't have one, then the hammer works fine too. If you're going to be doing this for the first time, I recommend practicing riveting a little bit before you do the first one, because if you hammer them too hard, they'll smash, or you can go off center and cause various little problems. So practice it a couple times before you try it on something that counts. Now Michael will put the Kydex blank into an oven with precise temperature controls, setting the heat at 330 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the temperature that works for us in this particular rig, but if you're using a toaster oven or some other heat source, you may need to use a different setting. After the Kydex reaches a sort of loose, floppy texture, about like well-cooked pasta, he'll pull it out, and quickly insert the knife into the kydex and then put it into a kydex press. Now this is a homemade kydex press that I made, though it actually works much better than some store-bought presses we've also used. So it's clamped tightly and left to cool. The press is pretty simple to make if you want to make one yourself. Basically just a steel frame with neoprene foam inside. After cooling, the knife should be very tightly contained in the kydex. If it doesn't require a fair amount of force to click in and out at this point, or if it doesn't have a nice positive click at all, then it needs to be reheated and reformed. Kydex can be reformed several times without damage as long as you don't overheat it. 
Michael now trims the kydex using a belt grinder, shaping it roughly to the profile of the blade. After removal of material, the kydex loosens slightly, so he'll check again to make sure the fit is still good. Over time, kydex will wear away inside the mouth, so you want to start with it on the tight side or the blade will be falling out after a couple months. Next, using a Dremel tool and a felt polishing wheel, he'll smooth the edges. Kydex can be quite sharp, so you want to make it nice and smooth, both so you don't cut yourself and so you don't snag your clothing or your gear. The felt wheel is actually capable of melting the plastic. Now that may sound bad, but it's not. With a little practice, you can control that surface melt in such a way as to achieve a very smooth finish that won't snag on your clothes or your gear. And here's the final result. Kydex is a fun way to get into knife making. It doesn't take a ton of money or equipment, and with a little practice, you can make a really effective sheath. If you're interested in picking up a copy of the knife shown in this video, go to my website, waltersorrelsblades.com, and click the Knives tab. Hey guys, if you found value in this video, I hope you'll consider partnering with the channel to help us bring more videos, better videos, more knives, more techniques, all that cool stuff. Click the link to Patreon to help this channel. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, bro, what are you waiting on? And check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that good stuff. Also, if you're into Japanese swords, check out my website, waltersorrelsblades.com, where you'll see more of my work and where you'll find videos about the making of Japanese swords, along with mounting, fittings, polishing, hamones, all kinds of good stuff. Now, more videos.